You mentioned being neurodivergent during the last AMA. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to go on about this too much. It says I've got to rub my eye. Fucking cry laughing, thinking about Vic Reeves. Um, yeah, so... Any tips on how to get through the day routines, getting stuff done? Thanks a lot. I'm not, like, I'm not, I can't start giving out CBT tricks and all that because it's just different for everyone and I'm not, like, I'm, I'd never do that. I think you just got to, like, work with somebody who understands you, really. I think that's the key thing, um, if you can find somebody to work with who understands you. I don't mean work, work. I mean, if you want to work on strategies for, for coping and stuff. Um, don't let it get you down is the main thing for I mean I was lucky right because I didn't know for a long time I didn't know and I had the validation of the world so I had, I kind of had an outlet from quite an early age um, and I was lucky that because I had the typical thing of being advanced in primary school and then getting into middle school and then suddenly hitting a bit of a brick wall academically so I did. I had really good scores until I was about eleven. I was like top of top of the school more or less. And then I was eleven, and then I went to middle school, and then things got suddenly quite difficult. And but I also had music and doing tapes and doing editing, and there was a point to me kind of being obsessive, and suddenly my obsession got diverted into all this electro and doing pause button tapes and all that kind of stuff, and then buying a sampler and. I, you know, I would get in approval from my mates in school because Electro, when I was, so this is like 83, 84, when Electro was big and I started first doing tapes, you know, suddenly people were talking about me as a DJ in school. They were saying, oh, he's a fucking DJ. And that was really good for my ego. And didn't, you know, it didn't matter that I was different to them suddenly. It didn't matter that I was outside the group because I was like, getting respect for what I'd produced when I was outside the group, if you know what I mean. So, it really helped me to have that. Um, and it's probably why I clung on to it so tightly for so long and was so obsessed with making it work, you know. Um, so, yeah, and I didn't know until much later that, you know, Asperger's and HFA, whatever, they're not like... It's not necessarily like a diagnosis that you have to worry about. It's only if it's affected your life in a negative way. So I didn't really need to know because there wasn't really anything I needed to tweak. And by the time I found out about it, I'd learned enough just through trial and error and experience, learned enough strategies for dealing with people and social dynamics. And I'm quite good at picking emotions up in people. It's not like I'm insensitive to that stuff. It's just that I don't quite, I quite often don't know how to behave in response because that those things aren't hard coded in me so i don't know some some i find some types of social interaction easier than others I find it much easier to deal with somebody in on in like a one-on-one -on -one than dealing with a large group of people but if i know the group of people really well i'm quite good but if i don't know them really well i tend to go quite quiet and i just go into lurk mode basically i just kind of observe people um so it all depends really on what the setting is in terms of how I respond and you know my, my strategies are, are very personal I suppose they're not really worth sharing because they're you know I'm coming at it from such a weird angle being a kind of being a, a musician slash artist slash whatever I am you know that I think that my advice probably isn't that useful to somebody who isn't doing that you know um but I don't know, maybe it would be. It'd be. I'd need to really discuss individual situations and ways that I would deal with him if I was in him, you know, for it for it to be any use. I can't just kind of give out general advice like that. But I do really appreciate that people... Like, I... I appreciate that people appreciate me talking about it, but I don't really know how to talk about it. And there's been a lot of situations where I've been in interviews and I've brought it up and they've quickly changed the subject. They don't want me to discuss this in interviews. Journalists see it as a little bit of an awkward subject area. It's a bit like if I started to discuss some kind of personal health problem. You know, they don't like talking about this stuff. A lot of people are kind of repulsed by anything that they perceive as a disability. 
which is a shame really because I don't perceive it as a disability at all you know or, or a kind of superpower you know I'm not on that tip either with it you know I don't I just think it's all about difference and people being different I don't like a lot of this kind of new identity politics in that you're supposed to join some group and identify with that group and wave the flag for that group that's just another type of group behavior to me and I can't really identify with that either so um, you know I find certain cultural phenomena a little bit difficult to engage with personally and that that's become a little bit more of an awkward thing as I've got older because people are so fucking fixated on these prefabricated identities you know I don't like that anyway god that was a lot of talking sorry um <laughs>